In my personal opinion, perhaps the most difficult aspect of landscape photography has to do with composition. It's one of those things, there's so much information out there about the topic to where you end up reading tons of articles and watching multiple videos on the topic and you really fill your brain of, with all kinds of rules and best practices and tips and techniques and do's and don'ts to where you get on location and in a, you know, in a real life scenario and you're setting up your composition and you notice at a corner of your eye that the sunrise or sunset's really starting to catch the clouds and the colors are really getting vibrant and your heart's beating faster and faster and faster and you notice that your palms are getting sweaty and your hands are getting shaky and you look out of the, maybe the left side of your eye and you see that there's fog building in the valley and you know these conditions are not gonna last long. So you start taking exposure after exposure after exposure and you're feeling kind of frantic and you take an image after image, and then you look up again and you notice that the color in the clouds are gone. Or maybe the, the fog in the valley is completely dissipated. And the peak moment is gone. But you look on the back of your camera, and you nailed it. You got the shot, you're happy with it. You got it to where the conditions were absolutely optimal. And that's a great feeling. You get home, you load the images on your computer, you have a, a clear head, your heart's beating a little bit slower. Hopefully your palms aren't sweating anymore and you start to look at the images, and you like them, but the composition's not as in exciting as it was while you were on location. You wish there was a couple things you did a little bit differently. And that's the topic of this week's video, is to discuss the single most powerful tool, outside of the camera, of course, to improve your landscape compositions. And that tool is the crop tool. And I know, I know, Mark, everybody knows what the crop tool is. That's nothing new, and you're right. But to be honest with you, I misused, or I shouldn't say misuse. I did not use the crop tool anywhere close to its full potential for years. I just used it as a mean to clean up the edges of my scene. If there was a stick poking in the right side, I just moved the right side over a little bit. Or if there was something coming up from the bottom, a, a rock that I half included in my scene, I'll just lift the bottom up a little bit. And that was it. That's how I used my crop. But the crop tool can be used as a way to absolutely transform your composition. It's almost like a time machine that will enable you to go back in time to where you first took the photograph and reconfigure the way you have the entire image composed. And Lightroom provides fantastic tools for that called these crop grid overlays. There's seven of them. I only use five, but they are absolutely fantastic. Now, the first one is very common, and this is probably the most popular or common compositional rule, and it's the rule of thirds. This is a, uh, a final image. This is edited and everything from a uh, trip to Acadia National Park. This is Boulder Beach. And this is the way the image looked at a camera, at least the composition at a camera. There's been a slight edit put on this, but this is the way I set up the composition. And then when I got home, when I took the photo, I absolutely loved it. But then I got home and I started looking at it. And I'm like, it just, the cliff in the background gets kind of lost. The, the rocks in the foreground kind of overpower everything. It's just not as impactful as an image when I first captured it. So if I come up here to the crop tool and pull this up here, this is the rule of thirds right here. And if you're not familiar with the way this works, you basically want to put visual interest where the lines intersect. So here, 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 and here. You don't have to put visual interest on all four of them. You could just put it on one of them, but it's just kind of a guideline. And that actually brings up another good point. I know this is called the rule of thirds, but none of these compositional techniques are rules or, or these compositional kind of guidelines. They're, none of them are rules. They're really just guidelines or recommendations or suggestions to kind of help you out a little bit. So the rule of thirds is actually very, very good at helping you to avoid placing the horizon right in the center of your, of your image or placing the main focus or main subject of your image right in the center. I typically put my horizon line somewhere near the top third of the image. So for this one, I'm gonna bring it down quite a bit. I'm gonna bring the bottom up quite a bit as well. And I wanna put, maybe not quite that much of a crop, I wanna put the intersecting lines very close to the cliff in the background. I want to put my horizon up here and I'm going to pull this out a little bit more. I think about right there. So there's visual interest on this boulder right here. There's an intersection right here on this main boulder as well. And then we have the cliff right here on this intersection. And then I hit close and that's very close to exactly what the final composition looked like right there. And that's a much more powerful composition than the way it looked originally. Now, the second type of overlay is the uh, is called diagonals. And this is an interesting one. I've got a great example right here. 
This is a final image from a trip to Moab, Utah, and this is Corona Arch right here. So this is the way, this is final, this is edited, and this is the way it looks straight out of camera. So it's definitely zoomed out a little bit more. And, and once again, the same thing, when I captured this image on location, I loved it. I got home and I'm looking at it, I'm going, it just kind of loses. The, the arch in the background is so small, it is, it's just kind of tiny, and it just doesn't have that visual impact that it did when I first captured the image. So I'm gonna come back up here to the crop tool. And if I hit the shortcut key O, that's gonna to toggle me over to the diagonal tool. Now this is great. This is actually derived from the rule of thirds. As you can see, it's very similar to where you wanna put your visual interest at the intersecting lines. This is great for, you guessed it, compositions that have a diagonal quality like this one does. So there's kind of diagonal lines leading up on this side. There's kind of a, this darker area here, and it just looks like there's some diagonal lines here as well. And then this area right here is diagonal down to the main subject, which is Corona Arch in the background. So this is the compositional or the crop grid overlay that I use for this image. And I brought it up some here, and I brought the top down a little bit as well. And I liked how this kind of diagonal line lead, led all the way up here to where this intersection is, which is right in the middle of Corona Arch. And I also have this intersection right here, which is also in the foreground interest as well. I'm gonna pull it off just a little bit to about right there, I think looks good. And I usually leave the padlock locked here just to lock in the original aspect ratio unless I change it. If I change it at all, I usually change it to four by five or eight by 10, but a lot of times I'll just leave it on original. But sometimes if I have to make a small tweak, I'll unlock the padlock and just kind of open it up just a little bit like that. That looks good. But that's definitely a much more focused image. This is the final image here than the way I, I originally composed it. So now the third one is something that's called triangle. And this overlay really helped me out with an image, one of my favorite images of this year. I actually posted it a, a couple months ago. And here it is right here. And this is the image out of camera. This is what the original composition looks like. And this is a perfect example of that when I was talking about at the beginning of the video where you're kind of running around frantic a little bit and you're not making the best decisions from a compositional perspective. So in this situation, the fog was starting to come over to the top right here. It didn't last long. And this was the composition I had. And at the time I loved it. But then I got home and I noticed that this area right here just really overpowers this area up here, which this is the main point of the image, this waterfall, and this was just too big and dominant. So I'm gonna come up, I came up here to the crop tool, I'm gonna hit the shortcut key O to bring up the triangle tool, and here it is. And what's cool about this one is if you hold down the shift key and hit O, you can kind of toggle this one back and forth to two different orientations. But this is the one I ultimately went with. I like that, it just kind of naturally fit this kind of um, outstream of the water right here lined up well, and then there's visual interest right here with the side waterfall as well. And there's like this diagonal quality to the top of the waterfall, the stone structure, which is actually kind of angling down. So this one kind of seemed like a perfect fit. And they just kind of brought it in a little bit because I wanted to, to remove some of the, the weight off the bottom, of the, the stone on the bottom. So I kind of brought it in like that. And I, I, I really kind of wanted to get the I got a little carried away with how precise I tried to make this one, but this kind of diagonal area right here, I, got, I tried to get it to line up exactly with that line there, which led down to this area right here, the waterfall, which ultimately led to the outflow of the water. But for me, this was a much more powerful composition, and here's the final image right here, than the way I originally had it composed, where it was just so zoomed out, which is kind of a, a common problem that I find within myself. Now. The next one is an interesting one, and it's called the golden ratio. And here's an image right here. I actually captured this uh, with my drone. This is an image from Maui, and I absolutely love this image. This is, a, in my opinion, a, a very powerful image, very simple image. But this is the way it looked. This was the original composition. And at the time, I loved this. I, and I remember trying to position it to where I cut, had this part of the road right here in my frame. I really like that. But then I got it home and I was like, you know what, this is just too much of a distraction. So I wanted to crop that out. So if I come into the crop tool, we'll hit the shortcut key O and this right here is the golden ratio. And this is considered just really a more advanced version of the rule of thirds. As you can tell, it's set up the, a, a very similar way, except there's more of an emphasis on this area right through here. You'll, you'll notice that the top third is not quite as higher and the bottom third line is not quite as low. But for this one, when I started to crop, I got the idea 
to put the intersecting lines, this intersection here and this intersection here, as close to the center of the road as I possibly could. And I believe I had it somewhere right about there. And I hit close and I found that that was a much more powerful composition. Here's the uh, the final image here than having that the road keep coming through the foreground right through or through the uh, the bottom of the frame right there. And what I find a lot of times, and this is just the way that I use the crop grid overlays, is I never really think about these. I, I, I'm never on location and I'm thinking to myself, ooh, this might be a great scenario for the, the golden ratio. I never once have I done that. But then when I get home and I get these images in post, I like to cycle through all these crop grid overlays just to kind of see, one, if it sparks some additional compositional creativity, and two, just to see if there's a different way that I can recompose this that I wasn't already thinking about. So. I thought that was a, a, a fantastic uh, example of uh, good use of the golden ratio. And the last one that I use, and this one's a little out there, it's called the golden spiral. And this is a, the, the, the most interesting one, but it's also the most fun to play with. So here is the final image from a, a recent trip to California. And here is the image, the composition that I saw um, of, of that image. And I got pretty close to this one. This is the, what I ended up with. And this is the final version right here. Oops, sorry. This is the yeah, the uncropped version, I should say. So for this one, I'm going to hit the crop tool. I'm going to hit the shortcut key O, and this is going to bring up the uh, the golden spiral. And this is another one. If you hold down the shift key and you hit O, you can kind of change the orientation of this one as well. And this is the one that I went with for this one right here. And I really like this image because it feels like the water's pointing this direction. The rock formation is also pointing this direction. You have this really bright green moss right here, and it's all kind of angling to this area, which is where the uh, the most color is in the sky, and it's also the brightest area as well, which is usually where the human eye naturally gravitates. But I knew I wanted to crop out this area. There's zero visual interest up here, and I find it very distracting, honestly. So I brought it down a little bit, and the way you use really the, the golden spiral is you're supposed to look for kind of sweeping lines, but ultimately the main subject of your image should be contained somewhere in this area right through here. And for me, I think I put it about right there, maybe not quite. I don't get too exact, ex you know, for where the, the visual interest is, like the, the rule of thirds, if my visual interest is not exactly on one of the intersection points, it's, I don't find it to be that big of a deal. I just use it as a guideline to, to figure out exactly where I put the, uh, the most interesting parts of my image. And this one is no different. So I think I ended up putting it somewhere like right about there for this one. And that is a much more focused composition. Here's the, the final image right here, actually, uh, than the, um, the original image where there was just so much bland sky. Now, there's plenty of situations where you, you go through all these crop grid overlays and nothing really jumps out at you, nothing excites you, and you just know that you just want to crop your image to, for a more powerful composition. And I do that a lot as well. Like this image right here. This image is uh, from uh, Kauai, a uh, trip last year to Hawaii. And then here is the image, the original composition, completely different. But this is a great example. I use the, uh, the rule of thirds with this one, which is probably the, the one that I use the most. And I just brought it down to somewhere right around there. I really liked how this kind of area led all the way up and around to the waterfall. And I also like this area right here. And I wanted to, of course, remove the crop out the kind of farmhouse area right there. And I ended up with that, which is definitely much more focused composition than that. And here's another example right here. This is also a, a recent trip to Moab. This is the final image. And then this is the uncropped version. This is the composition. And once again, I was super excited about this one. I love the little bush on the, uh, the left side of the frame because I thought it balanced everything out. Then I got home and I'm looking at it. I'm going, it's just, it's too distracting. So I came up here and I wanted to bring that side in. I wanted to completely remove it. So bring it all the way in here, cut that bush all the way out, brought the composition up a little bit. I wanted to put the tree on as many parts of the intersection as I could. So right there and right there. And that's pretty close to the, uh, the final composition that I went with. Actually, I noticed this area right here, this tr bush sticking out, which I didn't notice while I was on location either. I kind of brought that in as well. You basically, I think that the crop tool is 
honestly, the best way for me to explain it or to uh, to describe it, in my opinion, is it, it's literally like a time machine. And it just enables you to go back and, and fix a lot of those compositional errors that you might not have thought about while you were on location for, for whatever reason. And I use the crop tool on just about every single one of my images. Very, very rarely do I ever get the composition right the very first time in camera while on location. So... I hope you were able to, to get some good information out of that, some different uh, ideas of how to use the crop grid overlays. Maybe you weren't familiar with them at all. Uh, hopefully you were able to um, pick up something that you could apply to your compositions moving forward. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comment section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, and as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video, and I'll see you next week. Bye.